into three parts. The first part is about Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. The second part is about Simeon. And the third part is about Anna. What is common to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Simeon, and Anna? Joseph and Mary presented the child Jesus in obedience to the law. Simeon waited in the temple in obedience to the promise. And Anna prayed and fasted in the temple practically all her life long in obedience to the will of God. So the word of God for today is obedience. Obedience of Mary and Joseph Obedience of Jesus, obedience of Simeon, and obedience of Anna. My dear sisters, it is obedience. I am old enough to be able to conclude that when priests and consecrated men and women begin their journey of their vocation, the problem is most often chastity sensuality, controlling hormones. And then the problem shifts into materialism, comfort and convenience, that we do not like troublesome situations anymore, while the sensuality subsides, the materialism takes over. But when materialism subsides, there is still the third temptation, which is a temptation for power. Why am I telling you this? For the young, it is chastity. For the midlife, it is comfort and convenience. For the old, it is power. But in every season of consecrated life, the problem is always obedience. The temptation of disobedience does not know any age. From First Communion to novitiate to profession and for us even to ordination, the problem is always obedience. Why? Because all sin is disobedience. Why? Because the antidote to sin is obedience. Why? Because the only path to heaven is obedience. You might find people who are ugly in heaven. You might find people who do not look good in heaven. But you will not find people who are disobedient going to heaven. The original sin is disobedience. The antidote to sin is the obedience of Christ. And the way to heaven is the obedience of the disciples of Christ. So, what is obedience for us in consecrated life? One word. Yes. Yes. The words of Mary let it be done to me according to your word, is only see. It is only yes. It is only oo. It is only opo. But keep in mind, my dear sisters, that the yes is not originally from your heart because the first yes came from the Lord. Even if the Lord was not sure how, we do, how you would respond to him, the Lord had given you his yes. The yes of the Lord, the yes of the church, and now your weak, your fumbling yes. You will say yes to the Lord, you are everything for me. You will say yes to the Lord, I want to follow you. You will say yes to the Lord, I am willing to go all the way for you. But 
While obedience is basically yes, obedience also demands a no. You cannot be faithful to your yes if you are not courageous with your no. As you say yes to the Lord, you have to say no to the enemy of the Lord. As you say yes to the congregation, you have to say no to other dreams and ambitions. As you say yes to a life of chastity, poverty, and obedience, you have to say no to a life of comfort, to a life of intimacy of the body, to a life of intimacy involving our, our mortal bodies. You have to be willing to, and courageous to say no. And for this, my dear sisters, you will need a lot of character, a lot of willpower to be able to say yes cheerfully and to be able to say no courageously. But believe me, my dear sisters, believe me, I'm older than you. And because I am older than you, I have a right to tell you what can happen. It is not a question of willpower. There comes a point when you will get tired of saying, yes na naman. There will come a time when your superior will tell you, do this and go there. And you know that there is something better and wiser and more prudent than that. And yet you will still be told, do this and go there because this is God's will for you. When that time comes, bow your head and say thank you. Because at that moment, Jesus embraces you. There will come a time when you would be tempted to say, why not? When you will be tired of saying, no more. And then you will be tempted to say, yes instead of no, and no instead of yes. But my dear sisters, obedience is not about willpower. Obedience is not about strength of character. Obedience is about trusting in the mercy of God. So my third word for you this morning is, after yes, after no, it is awa ng Dios. You cannot reach silver, golden, or diamond relying on willpower. You cannot reach life everlasting relying only on your actions, on your decisions, on your even lifestyle. Because heaven is something greater than that. And faithfulness in your vocation is really and only about awa ng Dios, nothing more. When you fall, and you get discouraged, remember, discouragement is from the devil. Do not give in. Look up and say, May your awa pa rin ang Diyos. If you should have to walk in the valley of darkness, walk one step at a time. Do not trust your feet because your feet are made of clay. Trust in the hand who will guide you in the valley of darkness and be able to say, Kamay at awa ng Dios." At the end of it, my dear sisters, it is only obedience and obedience and obedience. And obedience is only about awa ng Dios, awa ng Dios, awa ng Dios. Obedience can hurt you. Obedience can bring you to tears. Obedience can confuse you. Obedience 
will be difficult. But when the difficult time comes, and you cannot say yes anymore, when the difficult time comes, and you do not have the strength to say no anymore, just say, Lord, help me. Lord, have mercy on me. And believe me, God will answer you because you're praying for something that is good. It is obedience alone that makes you the good bride of Christ that he wants you to be.